Morning pen friends, it's Andy Dorm from pandapenclub.com and today I'm going to be reviewing The Moon Man 80. I don't know why, but f first impressions of this pen, I immediately thought of that's probably meaningless to all British viewers who are older than me. Older than me or younger than me? Older than me. Younger than me. That's probably meaningless to all British viewers who are younger than 35. And it's meaningless to everyone else because I probably Unless, unless you're into 1980s puppet-driven um, adventure series, which is what the Thunderbirds were. And that little, little tune I just performed so splendidly was the Thunderbirds theme tune. It was about a gang of five brothers, that's right, the Tracy brothers, who lived on Tracy Island, although one of them lived on a space station, and they had five uh, sort of, sort of uh, remarkable technological vessels that they used to solve the mysteries or solve the problems or save the world. Um, and they, had, they were supported by their London agent, Lady Penelope. And Lady Penelope was driven around in a pink limousine by Parker, which in some respects leads me on to this pen. And that wasn't a sort of slick segue I planned in advance actually. That was <laughs> the shape of this pen is futuristic and cool, but it's not novel. It is an homage, a celebration of, a clone of, the Parker 45. The celebrated Parker 45 is now being celebrated in the form of the Moon Man 80. The forms of both these pens made me think of Lady Penelope in her elegant limousine, zooming around, supporting the various Thunderbirds. It's something to do with the elegance and the kind of, I don't know, what kind of spectrum I'd put this on or where I'd put this on the spectrum of, is it, is it sort of subtle, low-key retro or is this hardcore retro? I don't know. The colours are cool. I would call this colour that I've got here kind of dainty grey. <laughs> I don't know what it's called actually. I, I, I can't find anything more interesting than grey, so I came up with my own name. Mustard green is another fabulous colour that this pen is sold in. Um, the, the whole kind of homage to the Parker 45, uh, clone of the Parker 45 discussion is another interesting spectrum of language that we're using in relation to this pen. Um, Chris Rap 52 has rather fabulously on YouTube dismantled one of these, dismantled a part, Parker 45 and exchanged the parts, which is, well, really cool. And you can exchange most of the parts, it turns out. But it just, it, the, the, the de delicate dances of language that we, that we, pen lovers um, fiddle around with it is very much in evidence in a pen like this, which is such a, a manifest homage as to be perhaps a clone. Now, why celebrate something? Why pay homage? Why clone something? Because it's great, because it works, because it's um, a proven concept that is worth renewing, revisiting in almost <laughs> precise exactitude. Uh, the material here has, is uh, similar to the original, is plastic. 
polystyrene of some kind. The trimmings of the pen are metal. The nib is stainless steel and it emerges from this sort of tulip shaped little uh, ensemble of, um, of um, plastic materials like a sort of crocus or something, I don't know. Um, it's a hooded nib or a semi-hooded nib language in relation to the descriptions of this pen vary slightly. But we'll get to that in a minute. First off, let's talk about the clip. And there we have both our keenest reference to Parker and our clearest uh, di uh, divergence from the Parker 45. We have the, the classic arrow shaped clip but we have it minus the feathers at the top for reasons that are fairly unclear, perhaps as unclear as the focus I can get on my camera at the moment, but believe me, no feathers indicated on the clip of this. In terms of clipability and usefulness of this clip, let's have a look. Let's try it on my pocket. Works beautifully. Looks lovely and elegant, almost like a piece of jewelry to wear it in the, in the pocket of a blazer like that. And it um, clips very easily and yet feels quite secure in there. I almost want to hang myself upside down from the rafters to prove it to you. But yeah, it's secure, but not hatefully secure. I can pull it out again, which, which is lovely, which is, um, well, a dream of convenience. That's all you could ask for, really. Um, and that, that, that tightness, that, that sort of, yeah, that sort of fit and finish is exemplified throughout the pen, really. Everything is, looks and feels well made, well constructed, tightly put together, which makes Chris Rapp 52's YouTube video all the more impressive because he's, he's pulled it all apart. I'm not going to do that in my video. I'm just going to talk <laughs> about, about the, uh, the kind of non-ravaged version of the pen. So the finial, we have kind of dimples on the top and bottom of the pen, which are nice, They're sort of nice to rest your finger on, to sort of contemplatively count time or something. If you're a member of the Thunderbirds team, perhaps your villain would have this as a sort of detonator for his world exploding device. It feels like that. It feels like something you would press like a button. And again, it's very pleasurable to touch, feel, and turn around in your hands. It's extremely cool looking pen. And the coolness and the tightness is further exemplified by the cap action. It's a friction fit Quite a, quite a tight fit friction fit. I've seen a pair of Reddit users having a little debate over how easy it is to get the, the cap off this pen. And one of them recommends a sort of unique technique where it's much easier to remove the cap with one hand than two. Uh, for some people that's possibly true, or some models, but uh, I would say it's just about right in terms of Secureness, difficult to pull off like that without risking the thing flying across the room, which would be disaster. I'd have to edit or something, which I don't really want to do. <laughs> so, cap. Remove the cap 
on which you have the, the brand name emblazoned, Moon Man. I'm sure I could construct a, another Thunderbirds reference based on, on, the, on, on the, the brand name Moon Man, Thunderbird 5 Space Station, something to do with that, I don't know. The other thing I would point out about the fact that we have Moon Man written on the cap there is that, well, this is not a, a fake. There is, nothing, there is nothing malignant or malicious about the manufacturer's intent here. They are very clearly paying homage to the original and then stamping their own name on it. At worst, you can call it a, a, lazy, a lazy copy. I, I don't know what's lazy about this. It's been extremely well put together. I would then go on to talk about the shape of the pen overall, which maybe you're wearying of my Thunderbirds references, but this is, this is a little like Thunderbird 2. It's sort of a sort of, uh, a sort of bulging capsule shape with a very, very, very long swan-like section, which you can grip more or less wherever you choose, which is one of the lovelier features of this pen and makes it quite charming to write with in that sense. It has a long, long, long section that stretches all the way back to this stepped clip, uh, not clip, sorry, this stepped um, uh, capping mechanism which se separates it from the barrel or shaft of the pen. Posting is great. Posting is great on this pen. It's very deep, except there is a little in inner ridge inside the cap which can sometimes catch when you're trying to post, which is slightly irritating. <laughs> Far from the most irritating thing in my day today, but... <laughs> But, but it is, you know, a mild irritation when you're using it. But once you've got past that nightmare, the cap posts deeply and it posts securely. The, in terms of length specifications, this pen is 138 millimeters long posted and it is 136 millimeters long capped, which tells you an awful lot, all you need to know really about the depth of posting we have on this, this swan-like, elegant, dainty gray, retro fountain pen. Does look brilliant, does look brilliant. So, posting is good. The balance is great, posted or unposted, I find. Quite enjoy writing with it either way and can't, wait, quite, can't quite make up my mind which, uh, which, direction, which direction I want to go with when I'm writing at length with this pen and often end up flipping back and forth, back and forth. As I've already mentioned, the section is great and the, the little tulip on the beginning is, is kind of charming. Now, in terms of the, the, the nib, whether it's hooded or semi-hooded, I think it's almost pointless to describe it as hooded in my understanding of the concept of a nib being hooded. The function of the hood is, is to stop the, the, the nib from drying out when you leave it on the side of your desk or, or table or, or or crotch or <laughs> whatever uh, for a minute while you do something else, write a text message or something. I've had this posted, not writing for, well, quite a, quite a lengthy um, segment of time. And as you can see, or rather, as you cannot see, it is not writing, it's dried out. So it's, it's, um, a hooded or semi-hooded name in a hooded or semi-hooded nib in name only, but in my book that's no problem because it enables you to do this rather wonderful celebration of the original. 
original way a quill would work, which recalls your, your little arrow and the absent feathers rather nicely. You just dab your finger, oh, and there we have it restarting. And it's writing away beautifully in an instant. You know, the, the, the Pilot 823, Pilot Custom 823, one of the quirks, one of the in quirks that people find enjoyable about that pen is, is when you're writing for long periods of time, you need to, to have the, 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 the piston unscrewed to, to keep the ink flowing. And that's, a, that's celebrated and very gamely by fans of that pen. And I wouldn't say that this is, this is devoid of charm either, just starting it up with a little dab of your finger. My fingers are always covered in ink anyway, so it doesn't really matter. You may have other feelings depending on your, your standards of finger hygiene and, and how presentable you like to be or how, how instantaneous you like your pen to write. I'm, not, I'm rarely writing in a Thunderbird-style emergency scenario. You may be, maybe you are. <laughs> so you need your pen to, to work in an instant, and that's fine. So the filling system is probably where I should, should totter on to next. That is a converter. It's a, it's a propriety, proprietary converter, Jin Hao style. friction fit converter. Not particularly easy to interchange this one. Fills very easily, very nicely, straight off, straight out, straight out of the box. And wrote very well straight out of the box. Um, now to the writing experience. I have gone through various phases of opinion about the writing experience of this pen. At the beginning, initially, when I first started using it, I was somewhat irritated by how smoothly it wrote. I've, I've heard it described by some people as, as characterless, which isn't, isn't a million miles from apt. It does remind me a little bit of a biro. Initially, I found myself wanting to crush the nib into the page to get some sort of variation or, or which just isn't possible unless you want to annihilate your, your nib, your pen. It's an iridium tip according again to the sellers but of course as we know it's not really an iridium, people do not really use iridium these days but it is tipped with some sort of hard substance and typically the substance behind the little pellet or nubule of hardness at the beginning of your, your nib has some give or flex to it that some people, myself included, find absolutely delicious and, 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 and lovely. And it's sort of like, <laughs> it's sort of like the, 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 the tipping substance is, is your reliable parker, the driver. To, to your more flare-driven Lady Penelope substance behind on the, ni on, the, on, the, on, the, on the nib, in most cases. In this case, it's all Parker. It's nail-like, it's beak-like, it's, it's hard to write with. It's like a little nail scratching across the page with smoothness that recalls a biro, but degree of elegance that you don't get with a biro. I think a biro really undervalues what you have here. In fact, it's just an, an initial kind of impression. My impressions of writing with this pen improved the more I wrote with it. Particularly when I'm writing carefully, careful and small. This pen is only available in fine tip. So for me that requires me to write carefully if I'm going to be legible at all, if I'm going to write anything that anyone might want to look at, let alone read. As I've mentioned before, 
it's a bit tricky sometimes if you've if you left it um, posted you you get the odd dryness in there and it is dry in general very little flex but hand comfort is great wonderful pen to write with carefully a wonderful note-taking pen a reliable pen one that you could carry around with you under almost any circumstances and find useful under almost any circumstances really and at the price I think it's an absolutely superb everyday carry pen which I recommend with all my heart this is the writing sample section of our review of the Moon Man 80 fountain pen Moon Man 80. Now, as I mentioned, there are issues with this pen as a writer, which I excuse due to my fascination with its dear Thund Thunderbirds-ish appearance and its funny little design, I suppose. It's actually very similar in performance to its friend, the Moon Man M2. It's got bite. It's very fine. Which we're calling precise, it seems today. It's not an unbridled pleasure to write with. But it's absolutely fine, dandy and pleasant. Lovely panda seeks jinxed zebra for quick game of whist. Please don't forget to like or comment or subscribe to the Panda Pen Club channel on youtube.com. Thanks for watching.